Hi, this is Paul Solt from iPhoneDev.tv. This is a video of a mini course that I am teaching on how to create buttons with Swift. Now this has changed a little bit and it's different from Objective-C. So if you're used to that, this is gonna be how you do it. I've got a sample project in front of me now. All of the source code as well as the videos are available for free. You can download them. All you need to do is enroll in the course. It's a free enrollment and you can get access to all of the assets, all the Xcode projects, and the Swift source code. All right, so what we're gonna do is we're gonna walk through and we're going to programmatically create a button. That's gonna be the very first step. So this video is all about creating our first button. We've got this sample interface here. Now I'm giving you something to start with so that this app looks a little bit more interesting. So I've sort of stylized it with some fun colors and I've set up auto layout constraints. So now if we run this, what you can see is we can rotate the device and you'll see that the buttons will scale to fill. They'll do the same thing on different size iPhones and iPads. So this is a nice way to have auto layout just magically make your app responsive. Now what we're gonna work on is adding a button programmatically and we're gonna add it right below our add button. So when I press add button, I want a new button to appear. Now, we're gonna get started. We're gonna write some code that is going to do all the work for us and we're first gonna do it without auto layout. So you can sort of see the process of adding a button. Then our next button will add with the auto layout so that you can see how that process works. All right, so let's just jump right in. I'm gonna to switch to the single view editor and with that, it's gonna load up the, the interface here. Now I've already set up a touch up inside which is gonna be the add button press. So let's jump over to the view controller. This is where we're gonna start writing some code. You can download this and follow along as well. I really recommend it. All right, so down here, we've got the add button pressed around line 28. And what I'm gonna do is create a new button. Now, I wanna reference to this button. So I'm going to create a local variable. And I'm just gonna do this right above the method so that everything's sort of around the code that's working on it. When you actually use this in a project, you're probably gonna to want to move your variables to the top, but this will just keep it very obvious. So let's go ahead and create a button. We'll call this just button one is gonna be of type UI button. And this is gonna be a implicitly unwrapped optional. This is what you'll see when you connect things to your app. And from the interface, we're gonna do the same type of thing. That means that we're going to initialize it later on. So we've got our add button pressed, but I actually don't wanna initialize anything in there. Instead, I wanna create a little function for us to create the button. So let's call it set up button. And this is gonna set up our button. And then when the add button is pressed, we can call this. Um, but before we get to that, I think I just wanna call it on start. So we're gonna put this code on start. We're gonna revise this later on, but I wanna show you how to create a button right away. All right, so the first step is we need to initialize this button. If we don't initialize this button before we use it, our app will crash. So be on the lookout for that and I'll show you how to recover if you do run into that. So with button one, we wanna create a system button. Now, if you do the normal UI button, uh, constructor, you're not gonna get the option for the system button. So that's one of the gotchas when you're designing in code with Swift. What you actually have to do is you have to use the, the UI button class and we're gonna call a class method. And this is gonna be button with type. Now, one of the gotchas here as well is that once we're working with Swift, the types are very important. And we run into this issue where if you look on the little pop-up that appeared, the return type is any object. It's not a UI button. And that's because we're working with Swift 1.2. And this is sort of wrapping up some Objective-C logic and that provides an ID type back. And if you know anything about Objective-C, that'll make sense. Otherwise, don't worry about it. What you need to understand is you're gonna have to write the code like this in order to work with the button. So we're gonna do button with type. I'm gonna use autocomplete, so I'm gonna press enter. And once we do that, we need to give it a button type. Now a button type is an enum and we can just start typing UI button and then type and then do a period. Now this will give you code sense so that you can see or autocomplete so you can see what is going on here. We want the system button. So that will work. Uh, a short hand for this is dot system. But if you don't know what they are because you've never done this, that's going to be hard to figure out what you have to type here. So you could replace UI button type dot system with just dot system. All right, so that is how to create the button, but we're not gonna see anything on the screen and right now it has no text, it has no color attributes associated with it. So we really need to customize that. 
let's go ahead and set the title color and the title so that we can actually see something. So let's go do that. So button one dot title. Now, if you go ahead and and try to set the title, you're going to see, oh, there's no, it's not going to do what I want. So there's a, a state for a button. And so we need to call a special setter and you're going to have to do this for different attributes on the button. It's a little bit different than a label. So you're going to say set title and then it's going to be for state. So press enter for this first one. And the title here is going to be uh, something about animating our auto layout button. So we can make it as long as we want, as short as we want. Um, we can just call it animate auto layout. And the control state, again, is another enum that we're going to have to do. So if you just click here, and it looks like Xcode, there we go, UI control state. And then here, what we want is the normal state. Generally, when you're working with a button, the normal state is when you first see the button. So that's what we want to customize. And that's going to be good to go. All right, so now we have a title. And if we were to add this to the screen, we're probably not going to see anything. But in order to do that, we need to say button one, um, sorry, we need to say view dot add sub view and then button one. All right, so that's going to add it to the screen. And so here we're running into our first issue. With the button with type, again, it's giving us an any object. So this is what you're going to see when you use this. We need to convert this into a UI button. So I'm going to say as and then exclamation mark UI button. All right, so once we do that, we can now go ahead and run this and see if we see anything. We click add button. That's not going to run any code right now because it's actually adding when we start up in the view data load. So we added this code to view data load to just do our little logic. So we're writing this little code routine that can do the, the work for us, but we're not seeing anything. And that's because we need to set both the size and the position in order to see anything. So for button one, let's set the bounds. And this is going to be a CG rect. And we'll just go with this one right here. So just use your arrows to go down and select one of the ones that has the X parameter. CG float is fine. And what we'll do in here is just type in zero, zero. And then we're going to look at the width and the height. So for the width, let's just go with a, a constant. We'll go with 300. And for the height, I'm going to go with 80. So I want it to be 80 tall. And now we need to set the position. So the center is what we'll have to set here. And this is going to be a CG point. And we'll go ahead and use the arrows to select the second one and press enter. And then you can type in the values here. So the CG point, now I could go 100, 100, or 200, 200. And we can see if something appears on the screen. All right, so we've got our, our default button here. Now, I want to customize this button a little bit more. I want to add the background image. And so I have an asset catalog image. If we go to my images.xc assets, I already have a, a blue button. And I've made it so that this one will stretch. So if we actually show slicing on this, I've added the horizontal slicing to a square button, which allows this button to stretch as, as wide as we want. It's going to be 80 units tall. 80 points tall, and we've got the horizontal slice set up on the right hand side. Now, these options are on here, but I'm not going to go into detail on that. You can just grab the project and just get started. We're going to focus on the auto layout, not necessarily the graphics you use right now. All right, so let's go ahead and set that background image. So we'll say button one dot set background image. And again, we have to do this for a certain state. And we're going to load a, an image. So we're going to say UI image. And then named is going to be the parameter. And the name here is going to be blue button. That's what I called it in the asset catalog. So we can go ahead and load it. And we need to unwrap that. Or we should be able to just use that. So I don't need to unwrap it. And then we can do UI control state normal. All right, so what I want you to do is if you're still struggling to keep up, pause the video at any point and then continue to type in what you see here. It's going to help you understand what's going on. And let's go ahead and run it again. We now have a new button. Now we want to change the font so it's a little bit bigger, so that it's white. So let's go ahead and do that as well. 
we'll grab the title color for state so and the title label so that with the title label we can set the font so title label dot font and we can set that equal to a new font so we can do ui font and this will allow us to create one or we can do ui font dot system font of size and we can just do something like 17 and that's a, a, a sort of a default size and then we can do the title color. So in order to set the title color, we have to use another method here. It's called set title color, and we pass in a color. Now we can get a white color if we use the UI color class, and we say dot white color. That's going to give us the white color. And then we can set up the UI control state. Again, this needs to be normal. So once you have those two new lines, you're going to be able to customize the font size as well as the color. Now you can do blue color, red color, it's really up to you. Pause the video and change that as well. All right, so we have a, a little issue here. It's going to be complaining. Now, if you see an issue like this, it's pretty easy to fix. You can just click on the dot and it will give you a recommendation of what to do here. And so in this case, we need to insert either a question mark or a Explanation mark. I'm going to do a question mark here, and that's going to make it so that this line of code works and it doesn't crash. And so we'll go ahead and run this, and you should see that it's going to animate the auto layout. All right, so if you're using autocomplete, sometimes it will automatically insert this question mark, but it didn't do that for me when I was typing it, so we had to go back and do that. Okay, so now that's set up, we've got a button. We've positioned it. Let's just jump right back to it. And it's really not center. So if I want to center this button, what we have to do is use the, the size of the screen to figure out what the center position is and divide it by two. So we can do that easily for the button one center. We can go in here and say view.bounds.width, and then we can just divide this by two. If we do that, we're going to get a centered button and it's down a little bit. Now, if I wanted to have this button more snug with uh, the top button, what we can do is use the different values for the sizes of the buttons so that we can move everything down. And that's really up to you how big things are. But what we can do is just sort of guess and check, or you can just type in the values here. Now, I know my button above is 80 points tall, so I'm going to start with 80, and then I know the status bar is going to be another 60 or so. So if we just add those two values, 80 plus 60, that is going to shift down our button. Now, this isn't taking into account any of the spacing I might have. So if I want to add a little bit of padding, what I'm going to do is add the default, which is going to be eight points. So we're doing a little bit of math just to shift things down. And then there should be padding on the top side as well. So in order to get that to work, we're going to add another eight points. Okay, so that's uh, a little way to add the button so that there's spacing. You can really set it to whatever you want. It really doesn't matter. I just want the spacing a little bit tighter. So that's what I'm going to do here so that we have some space from the top. All right, so that is how to add a button. And this is all doing it in code. The last thing that we want to do is we want to respond to when this button is pressed and we want to say something. So let's go ahead and add the, the button one. We need to set the target. And so there is a add target method and we'll add the target and we'll say that this code file is going to respond. So we say self here, it's a special keyword. And now we have to type another keyword called selector. This is going to allow us to call another chunk of code. And we're going to do a capital S here and start typing selector and then open parentheses and the name. So this is going to be our animate button pressed. So we're calling it and you're going to have a colon at the end. And that is it. Now close that parentheses, pause the video so that you can type this exactly as I have it. And then we're going to do the UI control events. Now this one's a little bit different. This is another enum value. What we want is the touch up inside. 
This is the default that gets connected when you do this in interface design or interface builder within the storyboard. But if you're doing it in code, you have to do this all yourself and it's not automatically set up. All right, so now we have an event that's gonna get called. Now the problem is when I click on this, it's gonna crash. So once I lift up my finger, the app crashes and it's trying to call this method that doesn't exist yet. So in order to get this to work, we're gonna add a new function down here, right under the add button pressed, and we're gonna call this the animate button pressed. And it's got one parameter, that's what the colon means. So we're gonna do an open parentheses and we'll just type it like the one above, sender any object and that's it. All right, so we can test out that these buttons work. We can print out some text, so we just say animate. And in the, the top one, we'll just print out add. All right, so let's go ahead and run. You can pause the video and add those two things. So we added a print line, which is a print statement that will print out the text to the console so that we can double check to make sure things are working. And so if we hit add, we should see add appear on the bottom in our console. And then if I jump back, we can animate and we see that appears. All right, so there is how you can create a button programmatically, connect an action to it, and do it the swift way. Uh, we have to create a system button and we have to convert it into a button because by default right now, in Swift 1.2, it is not interpreted as a UI button type, it's in any object. Then we set all the attributes that we want. Now this is not using auto layout so that when we move things around, it's not gonna move appropriately. And one of the ways we can see that, how auto layout is helpful is if we were to rotate this, we see that the button is no longer centered in our screen. So if we wanna make it so that this will work in any rotation, we'll have to use auto layout to really set up the position of a button. And we'll do that in the next video. Hey, this is Paul Soul. Real quick, I wanna interrupt you. You're watching this tutorial on YouTube and I actually have a course with all the source code, all of the video files that you can actually download. So what you need to do is just jump on over, click the link and you can jump into this course. It's free. It's gonna show you how to animate using auto layout in your iPhone apps with Swift. So if you're enjoying this, go ahead, click the link and jump into the course. It's free and you can get started with building a nice animation using auto layout.